Right, welcome back to the video. Uh, today we're going to be having a look at some math nodes. Um, obviously when we're building shaders we do lots of maths uh, and today I'm going to take it right back to some really basics uh, and then we'll build up our knowledge and, and the complexity and show how some of these things can be used. Um, so we're going to start right at square one with add. So if I take two values and add them together hopefully we all know if I do two add four we'll get six. Um, well, 6 is a value over 1, so the base colour is not going to display it properly. If I put this in emissive, we start getting some glow. Um, if I want to know exactly what that value is, though, we can have this function here, debug scalar values. This comes with the engine. If I just plug that in, uh, we get 6. Um, I've set the default number of integers, or number of digits, sorry, um, down, so it's a bit easier to see, but you might see more numbers here and then. Um, things with your one. So, um, but we can see, yeah, two and four is six. Uh, subtract obviously works the other way. Four minus two, it's going to be two. Get my maths right. Um, oh, this is two minus four. Sorry, so it's minus two. Um, notice the order of the operations matters with subtract. Two minus four is different from four minus two. Um, whereas adding, it doesn't matter which order you do them in. So add is actually a slightly cheaper. Uh, operation to do then subtract um, but it's incredibly minor I believe so um, yeah that's adding subtracting couple of things firstly uh, I had a question the other day what happens when we add a value to a texture so if I just take uh, some noise so this input here now is a texture input if we add that well in a missive um, it's going to add this value everywhere. So every pixel that exists in the noise, currently we're adding 0, we're not doing anything. Um, if we start adding 0 0.1, 0 0.25, it's taking that value and adding it to every pixel in that texture. Um, yeah, if we use the RGB, the full thing, it's going to add 0.25 to the red and the green and the blue. It's going to assume the same value in all three uh, and just add that everywhere. Um, so yeah, one thing I want to uh, highlight, um, and it's pretty trivial with, with adding, um, but that's what I call the do nothing point. So if I take a value, or if I take a texture, so for example here my clouds noise, just the red channel, if I take that and I add nothing to it, I get the same result. Um, pretty, uh, yeah, because they're pretty trivial for an add, um, but when we get into slightly more complex nodes, this idea of where what color do I need to be adding or multiplying or or powering or or whatever um, in order to have no effect on something so for adding it's pretty obvious that if we add nothing we get no change um, but I want to just highlight it here um, so yeah that's adding subtracting hopefully uh, should be pretty straightforward um, yeah so moving on multiply same thing same kind of thing here, a lot of parallels with the add and, add and subtract. Um, again, multiplying doesn't matter what order the inputs are, dividing very much does, um, and so dividing is a more expensive um, operator to use. And we can see here 4 by well, four times 2, multiplying can be giving us 8. Um, if I did 4 over 2, oh, 4 over 4, 4 over 2, all this nice simple maths. Um, cool. Um, when we're using masks, oh, let's actually just create a texture. So just to demo that idea of a do-nothing point, so if I just create a couple of textures here, I have some clouds, and then uh, pan those. So I've got just some simple moving clouds, and I'm going to create there a mask. And I'm going to add them well, yeah, okay. So if I then got like another texture, in this case, nice brick, and I want to add my scrolling clouds to my brick, but not everywhere, then I need to kind of like think about what my mask is going to be doing. So in this case, I'm going to multiply by black to create this kind of black edge around it, and I'm going to add this on top. We can see 
So I do have the do nothing point. So the do nothing point here is black. We're adding that. We're adding zero. Um, and we need to multiply the edges of the mask away first. We're multiplying by black there. If we were going to use a different set of, of maths, we'd have to control these in a different way. But um, hopefully this should be pretty uh, understandable for for basic uses, for basic multiplying and and, and maths like that. So cool. Moving on to something slightly more well, no, a really simple one. Um, the one minus node, what does that do? Uh, so if we've got all our maths and we're doing our, our clouds, our textures, whatever, uh, the one minus node, I bring in clouds, does exactly what it says on the tin. Just takes an original input and inverts it. So as long as our values are in the range from 0 to 1, this is another concept that I'll I'll introduce now that I always like to think about the value ranges like what's the largest value we could be having what's the lowest value so when we're dealing with just a texture imported we know that the, the value range is from 0 to 1 right the black is the lowest value white is the highest we always know that these values are 0 to 1 um, if I invert that or I do 1 minus that everything that was white as was 1 1 minus 1 0 so everything that was white becomes black everything that was black becomes white so it's just going to invert the colors in this there we are um, but the value range has stayed the same so we're still in that 0 to 1 range um, if we had a bigger range then 1 minus would kind of like invert that around the 0 0.5 point um, so uh, useful to invert things sometimes you've imported your texture as a roughness and it should be a smoothness you can just invert it um, lots of things like masks and stuff uh, pretty handy. So, um, this is a good one. The power node. So, what is a power? Well, if I do something quickly here as a demo, if I take 2, 2 times 2, and I multiply it, hopefully, we should know that that is 4. But also, I take the same. 2 to the power of 2 it's going to be 4 so something to the power of 2 means itself multiplied by itself that many times so if I then did 2 by 2 and then multiplied by 2 again this is going to give us 8 but 2 to the power of 3 if I do this will be 8. So it's here, this, this 3 is corresponding to the number, how many times we're multiplying that number by itself. Um, that's what the power node does. And you can see hopefully if we did the power of 10, or 8 or whatever, that's really easy to do. Uh, taking this and multiplying it lots and lots of times, and lots and lots of times, really not something we want to do. Um, so that's mathematically what the power node does uh, and how can we use it? Well if I take the use case of a low number and we multiply 0 0.1 by 0 0.1 we're going to get 0 0.01 if I take the same thing and I do multiply 0 0.9 by 0 0.9 we're going to get 0 0.89 uh, 0 0.81 sorry so what am I trying to demonstrate here? Well, the, the result of this is much lower. 10% of our original value, 0 0.1 is the same as doing 10%, so we're taking a lot less here, 0 0.9 times 0.9. Well, 0.9 of something is 90% is of something. That's quite a lot of it. So the amount proportion we've ended up with in each case is a lot less here and a lot more there. So if I just have a look at this as a texture. So we take our black and white texture. We have values again in the range 0 to 1 anything that's already quite dark anything that's already quite low like this is going to get a lot darker anything that's already quite bright values like 0 0.91 they're going to stay quite bright so actually what we're doing here is we're increasing the contrast 22 and 24 you can see the darks are getting darker much quicker and the the lights are staying lighter um, and if I just quickly preview it here you can see hopefully live that's happening
which is pretty cool. Um, and so going back to those uh, few, well, firstly, um, the opposite is going to be true. So if we want to increase the contrast, we can use values over 1. If we want to decrease the contrast, we can use values between 0 and 1. You can see you can fade that out. So the do nothing point for a power node is 1. Is anything multiplied by itself once is itself, isn't it? Multiply by 1. The do nothing point of multiply is 1, so the do nothing point of power is also 1. Um, which is really powerful. Um, you might have used Photoshop. Just assume you have. Or any kind of imaging software, photo anything. Um, when you want to do increasing contrast, reducing contrast, it's that same kind of math. So again here, we're making the darks darker, we're keeping the lights light. Um, we get an increase and decrease in contrast. Well, we can do that in Unreal. Uh, careful to power by zero. Um, Unreal can probably cope with it pretty well, but actually the result of this should be an infinite number um, and sometimes you'll get things that blow out and bloom crazy um, quite often that's a result of, of powering by by zero um, don't really want to do that um, and what else I want to say about power that's about it I think um, yeah very very useful node um, great to be able to add dynamic contrast to things in engine um, and finally, I think for this video, I'm just going to show that using those three nodes together, so if I start with some clouds, if I have first a, well, that's something I just wanted to say about power, yes, um, the value range. So no matter what we do to our power value, our value range stays the same. So one to the power of anything. Let's use this one power exponent. So no matter what I put in here, we're going to get 1. So no matter what this value is, 1 to the power of anything is always going to be 1. And similarly, 0. 0 to the power of anything is always going to be 0. So what that means is no matter what our contrast values are doing, our black and white points are staying the same. Which is why this now works as a contrast. So, yes, so then if by combining those three things together first doing a power as exponent then doing a multiply uh, density and then finally doing an add for this I'm going to call this one offset um, so by doing these three things in the chain we've got full control over every value in our in our grayscale mask um, and we can do things like increase the black point, we can do things like increase the white point, we can change the, the contrast between the two. Um, and I'm going to increase one more, one more concept, um, and that's the clamp node. So if I want to have values here that start in 0 to 1, and I want to use my mask, and I want to do all sorts of things to it, um, I know that my default power should be 1, default multiply should be 1, default add should be 0, because those are the do nothing points of these uh, operators and I'm going to clamp that still between 0 and 1 we can see our range is the same so now currently we're doing nothing if I want to make this completely black oh, well, if I want to make it completely white I can do that by using the add I set that back to default uh, if I want to increase the contrast I can do so I want to reduce the contrast right down. I can do that as well. Well, if I increase the contrast quite a lot, but I want to make my patches, these white patches, more solid, I want to sort of use it more as kind of like a a mask between two things. Well, if I increase the intensity, any values that were slow, very small here, will get bigger. If 
plug this into a very high amount. Increase the offset. You can see now we're really controlling the visuals of what this mask looked like. So here, just some simple clouds noise. Here, let's put this one back in. We're getting very kind of high contrast levels. Between our blacks and whites. Um, so yeah, so I think that's going to be it for our initial math. Um, we only really covered add, multiply, and power, um, but even just between those three, um, hopefully you all know those nodes from sort of learning math at school. Um, but those three combined together with a simple black and white input, we can create all sorts of variety of different masks and shapes and things uh, and these can all be dynamic and these can all be kind of plugged into um, various other uh, masks or textures or in-game parameters all that kind of stuff um, and we can create all sorts of outputs just with our, our simple math nodes so hope that was helpful we've got quite a lot of other math things to go through but we'll do those in other videos um, but yeah uh, as always questions comments etc let me know um, and yeah hopefully you learned a few things